lasers. They can be found in everything from grocery store scanners and printers to lethal alien blasting weapons and ill-tempered sharks to protect your frickin' evil lair. Okay, the last two are science fiction, but lasers were originally developed for scientific applications that were very much real. It was all the way back in 1917 that the illustrious Albert Einstein published a paper containing the underlying science that would allow light to be amplified enough to form a laser beam. But it wasn't until the late 19 50s that the idea really took off, with the first ever laser being turned on in 1960. It didn't take long then for people to find real applications for lasers, as the laser was used to treat an eye patient the very next year, and then by 1969 we were using lasers to estimate the distance to the moon. But how do lasers generate powerful enough light for these cool uses? The idea basically boils down to the way electrons that spin around the nuclei of atoms behave. You see, electrons can gain or lose energy in a number of ways, which can happen if light hits them. Inside of a laser, a powered lamp flashes, and the light from this flash energizes or excites electrons in a material called a gain medium. Some of these excited electrons spontaneously lose their energy and in the process give off a photon, an extremely tiny unit of light. The photons then hit other excited electrons, causing more and more photons to be released, which travel at exactly the same angle and phase as the original photon. Eventually, enough in-phase photons will bounce back and forth off of two mirrors on either side of the laser and shine through one mirror, which is semi-transparent, forming a laser beam that you can use to play with your cat. Laser beams are powerful due to the way the internals amplify the light, and they're narrow due to the fact that the photons are coherent or in phase. And although the first laser was that familiar red color, these days we can produce many different colors of laser light by using different gain media. Different materials will emit different wavelengths of light and also need different amounts of energy to excite their electrons. Both the costs of these various materials and their different energy requirements contribute to the fact that some colors of laser are more expensive than others, with red typically being the most readily available and cheapest. And with advancements in laser design, it's become one of the most versatile pieces of technology invented in the last hundred years. High energy lasers have made it possible to cut things with light alone, send data over very long distances through fiber optic lines, identify fingerprints with precision at crime scenes, and even remove embarrassing body hair. We're seeing other cool stuff too, like Facebook Aquila, an experimental drone that transmits data at very high bandwidth using laser light. And of course, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the humble optical drive, which, while it might be on its way out, really got people thinking about the benefits of using lasers to store, access, and send information. But if lasers have been around for over half a century, why then don't we have cool weapons like the phasers from Star Trek? Well, the main hurdles to real-life laser guns are power. We just haven't gotten energy sources powerful enough to weaponize lasers shrunk down to any kind of practical size, and efficiency, as lasers strong enough to cause physical damage are susceptible to overheating. However, active research into directed energy weapons has made some progress in recent years. Just don't hold your breath waiting for someone to turn the moon into, oh, I don't know, a space station. Speaking of directed things, what if there was a way for people to easily direct their online payments to you? How about Braintree? If you're building a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, their Braintree V.0 SDK is one amazingly simple integration that gives you every way to pay. Developers around the world have embraced the Braintree V.0 SDK as the easiest way to add secure mobile payments to their apps and websites. Braintree allows you to accept Apple Pay, Android Pay, PayPal, Venmo, credit cards, and even Bitcoin, and if something new pops up, Braintree will support that too. It's used by Uber, Airbnb, and GitHub, so yeah, it's pretty darn scalable. But let's say you're not looking to take on Uber tomorrow, but you want to try out Braintree, no worries. You can even get your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free at braintreepayments.com slash techquickie, linked in the video description. Go check it out. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, do that thing. If you disliked it, do the other thing. If you want to check out our other channels, we've got some great content up on Channel Super Fun right now. We're talking, we're talking jousting in armor on swagways. Go check that out. And also, leave a comment in the, with the video d d uh, comment thing below. Comments if you have suggestions for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.